But I'm very pleased to be joined this evening by the financial journalist Laurie Laird. Laurie, thank you so much for coming in. It's very good of you. Why has the Bank of England got it so wrong and why has it had to slam the brakes on so abruptly? But the Bank of England has it wrong in so many areas and I think it's a little bit unfair to criticise just the Bank of England. Central bankers all over the place have got it wrong and Jerome Powell, you've heard of him, he's first amongst equals amongst central bankers, he's head of the US Federal Reserve. Last summer he actually said in public, I now know how much I don't understand about inflation. And that sort of humility is lovely from a public figure, but that's panicky. That's a little bit scary that the world's leading central banker didn't get inflation. But we've looked at for so many months after the pandemic when inflation started to rise, what was the response? Don't worry about it. Transitory. We, we, we could raise interest rates, but that won't make energy prices lower. That won't produce more semiconductors. We heard that for a long time. Then inflation wasn't transitory. Now we see that we hear a lot about a wage price spiral. We have to raise interest rates very, very quickly so people don't want higher wages to keep up with inflation. But now we have a new message that no one can quite figure out. So we had higher interest rates today, but the hint that maybe rates aren't going higher again, that's difficult to sell if your mandate is to keep inflation at 2% and inflation's in fact at 10%. Well, I agree with you that it's not just the Bank of England. It goes back a long time, doesn't it? It goes back to the Greenspan idea that the Federal Reserve could bail the American economy out of every passing financial Greenspan storm put. that Greenspan put. And that that led to the Federal Reserve pumping money into the system at the slightest sneeze of markets. And markets just got used to that, and they got used to easy money. Absolutely, markets got used to easy money, but we also have something else going on. We have central bank. This allowed governments to run much bigger deficits. They have printed a lot of treasury bonds all over the place. A lot of uh, institutions are sitting on this, and one of the big potential risks of instability we have now is the price of those as inflation rises. As inflation rises, the yields on these things rise, the price goes down, and, these, and we have institutions that are sitting on big losses. And this is really important because you've got in pension funds the mark-to-market rule, and they will be taking these losses annually as they produce their accounts, but the regulators told them that they had to buy gilts, bonds in other countries, because they argued that that met their liabilities and therefore they couldn't grow to pay the pensions, they had to buy an asset that is really eaten into by inflation and higher interest rates. But these were meant to be the safest thing that you could possibly buy. What we've seen in the U.S., where we've seen these bank failures, is banks didn't mark to market, as you say. They, they assumed they would hold these to maturity. So the price of these very, very safe assets is starting to fall. This is where we could see vulnerabilities in the financial system. And one of the reasons the Bank of England said we could pause, the Federal Reserve said it last night, is they are concerned about financial stability. They are concerned about what may be lurking in the banking system. And when we had the problem in the UK market in September after the mini budget with the LDIs, Actually, the Bank of England had a huge conflict of interest because Absolutely. it lost over a billion pounds, 20% of its pension fund, because it had taken on risky LDIs without realising the risk. So you've got regulators, central banks, not even realising the risks they're taking, let alone in the wider economy. Here's the most remarkable thing about that incident, and we can look back on the mini budget era, and it's almost like a bad dream. We've almost forgot about it. And lucky for the UK, so have investors. It's remarkable that the UK isn't paying a risk premium for all of that. But our yields on all maturities, say 30 years, are below where they were on September 22nd. We've got a bit of a free ride here that we're not being charged a risk premium, not only because of what happened then, but we do have potential political instability coming. We're not that far away from an election. And you've got the terrible conundrum that the Bank of England was wrestling with today and the Federal Reserve yesterday and in the Federal Reserve announcement they indicate this, that they need to tighten rates further to deal with inflation, but they need to loosen them to deal with the risk of a financial crisis and they don't actually know what to do. They do. It doesn't feel like they know what to do. It hasn't felt like they've known what to do throughout. It feels a little bit like they're fighting inflation, or they were, 
until this financial instability came. But they're fighting inflation with the old rule book. They're looking at the 70s. They're talking about this wage price spiral, which, again, is keeping people from asking for raises to keep up with inflation. But we're not in the 1970s right now. We don't have as much collective bargaining. You, you're not setting wages across a full economy. But you said something in your monologue I wanted to ask you about. You talked about central banks not perhaps not having enough accountability. And I think that's a really good question. How do you do that? Could you make central banks be accountable to politicians and still have a good outcome? Well, until 1997, the Bank of England was not independent. And there was the famous Ken and Eddie show when the Chancellor and the Governor of the Bank of England would have a discussion. It was all very public. Say that if the government was adjusting interest rates for political reasons, the Bank of England was saying, hold on a minute. And it led to an accountable solution with the Bank of England giving advice, but the politicians deciding. But I might argue that, that that's the good chap theory, and that may work, but it's not guaranteed to always work. Well, no system always works. Fair enough. And as it was coming but out of my mouth... Except, I'm... potentially, the old Bundesbank, which was absolutely focused on inflation and nothing else. And it's the mixed instructions to central banks that led to the Greenspan put and have led to the confusion over what they're actually trying to do. If they're focusing on sound money, then that's a job they can actually do. Bundesbank is a little bit different, though, because it had one mandate, and that was inflation, where the Fed has, the Federal Reserve has a dual mandate, full employment and fighting inflation. The Bank of England would say, we also have a dual mandate, fighting inflation and financial stability because the Bank of England is the ultimate regulator of banks as well. And therefore this has led to a degree of confusion. Thank you so much for My coming pleasure. in. Your expertise is much appreciated. Uh, don't forget to let me know what you think. If your mortgage is going up, mailmog at gbnews.uk.